Good morning, everybody. This is a new colloquium by the Instituto de Astrofisica de Andalucía. And uh, today we will have the talk by Professor Ricardo Gil Hutton from the University of San Juan in Argentina and CONICET. And he will talk about polarimetry in planetary science. Uh, Ricardo will be introduced by uh, Dr. Isabel Marquez. Please, Isabel. Hello, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for coming again to a, to a new Severo Ochoa web locum, so colloquium by, in online form, format. And uh, especially, we are especially grateful to Professor Ricardo uh, Hill Hutton, um, our uh, invited guest now. So uh, uh, um, I grateful, uh, gratefully acknowledge him and um, I extend uh, the invitation for the next future when next, uh, I mean, the vi virus uh, will tell us when next is to, to come here in, in person to the, to the IAA. Uh, professor Ricardo Hill Hutton is, uh, is professor at San Juan National University in, in Argentina, where he is direct, direct, the director of the Planetary Science uh, Group. He's in charge of several undergraduate and graduate courses, and he has supervised more than 20 PhDs, master and degree thesis in, at, at several universities. Professor Hill Hutton got his PhD from La Plata University uh, in Argentina, and he has been visiting professor in several countries, mainly Uruguay, Spain, Brazil, and Mexico. He's a former director of the uh, Complejo Astronomico El Leoncito, the observatory in, in Argentina for many years. And he has participated in several commissions and working groups. For instance, he was the president, vice president, uh, excuse me, of the old commission 15 for physical study of comets and, and minors body of the, of the IAE. He has been member of the scientific organizing committees of several international meetings uh, worldwide. And additionally, he is a member of several science advisory committees for the Ministerio de Ciencia, Tecnología e Innovación Productiva, so for, for the, um, uh, for the uh, National Council of the Technical and Scientific uh, Research, the CONICET uh, uh, in Argentina, and also for San Juan National University. His area of expertise is the collisional processes and surface properties of uh, atmosphereless bodies in the solar system. And uh, to do this research, he participates in theoretical and observational studies of solar system objects since the, since the 90s. He has published more than 100 papers and uh, uh, about 50% of them um, as a first author and several chapters in, in planetary science books. Today, as you know, he's, um, he's talking about polarimetry in planetary science. So thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Hill Hutton, for being here and, and give you the word. Thanks. Thank you very much for your presentation and for the invitation to participate. My aim for this talk is to give an idea about how useful could be polarization to do research in planetary sciences. The general outline is to divide uh, the presentation in four parts, uh, which are first a brief introduction about the processes involved, then uh, the laboratory studies which provide insights about the physical relevance of the observational results, some important results uh, about uh, atmospheric bodies mainly in the solar system, and finally the difficulties that must be faced when we try to observe uh, disks. Uh, first, as a brief introduction, we must uh, um, say that the, well, I mean, we have polarization at some level when uh, there is an appreciable asymmetry in any astronomical situation. The main asymmetry giving rise to astronomical polarization in, in planetary science is the asymmetric distribution of scattered radiation. The measurement of the polarization can help to identify the scattering mechanisms or they can give information of the properties of the surface uh, and or more important to planetary science the scattering medium, for example, the size, the shape, degree of alignment, and refractive index of particles, for example. Uh, this is, uh, is uh, a, a known uh, uh, explanation of uh, what we have when we are dealing with, the, with waves, where we have here a vector, a, a, 
uh, with two orthogonal components expressed in this way, where this is our phases, these are, these are amplitudes, K is the uh, wave number and omega is uh, the frequency. Uh, if we uh, express uh, this vector with these components in this form, and we choose arbitrarily a, a plane x equals zero, we have this expression. And we, if we have uh, or started only the real part of this expression, we end with this, uh, these ones, which in fact, they are equation of uh, an ellipse in polar coordinates given rise to the three types of polarization we have, the linear polarization, circular polarization, and elliptical polarization. In the case of uh, planetary science, the most important of the three is in, by far the uh, linear one, uh, which, is, uh, ap which appears when the two phases of uh, these two components are, are equal. So, uh, we, uh, when uh, in planetary science we we are uh, we are working with uh, linear polarization, and we need an asymmetry proce process to to obtain polarimetry polarization. So uh, the main uh, the main process, the relevant one, is to produce asymmetry uh, by reflection uh, in particles, usually multiple ref reflections. That results is, a, is, is uh, that results in a scattering process. Since the reflection intensity is different for components parallel, parallel and uh, parallel and perpendicular to the scattering plane formed by the incident and reflecting rays, uh, mm, uh, we have uh, okay, that, that the uh, uh, the scattering, uh, the scattering is produced at, at different angles of incidence and asymmetry is produced uh, 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 due to the reflection coefficients are different for way parallel and perpendicular to that plane. So uh, this is a known figure where we have the two components, the parallel and perpendicular to the scattering plane and there is it's clear that the reflected intensity is different for different uh, incidence angles here. So uh, if uh, there is a clear asymmetry between the two components, we obtain polarimetry by, by reflection. Uh, okay, but uh, uh, since, uh, since the uh, total polarization change for different angles of incidence, that in planetary science, uh, the phase uh, we work with the phase angle, which is two times the angle of incidence, is a, it is a highly relevant to study how the polarization varies in function of the phase angle, which is called the phase polarization curve, something like this one here. Uh, uh, there are gra groups in France, Spain, Finland, and other countries. Uh, uh, doing laboratory experiments to understand the processes involved and to understand the results of observations in, in, in polarimetry. Uh, as an example, I show here one of the most simple instruments called the program to surf which uh, has been operational since 1999. This instrument is an imaging photopolarimetry photopolarimeter designed to retrieve the scattering phase function within a large uh, phase angle range at uh, around 500 and 600 nanometers for grain de grains deposited on, the, on a, a small surface here where there is, there is a sample. A random polarized laser light source illuminates the deposited uh, particles here and uh, here, uh, polarization beam splitters uh, splits the scattered light in, in the two orthogonal components to obtain the uh, components of the uh, vector uh, uh, produced. All the available laboratory instruments of these types have a similar scheme and provide similar interesting results. Uh, as an example of our laboratory results, the measurements of uh, finally, these finally dispersed mixtures of material with different albedos revealed that the deep and wide 
of the negative branch significantly increase with the degree of optical heterogeneity of the mixture of particles. The figure here uh, present polarimetric measurements of uh, magnesium oxide and iron oxide pow powders and their mixture in red and blue light. The magnesium oxide sample is spectrally new, neutral, where the uh, iron oxide powder is very red, having an albedo of about 4% in blue light and about 35% in red light. So we can see that the negative polarization is very strong in blue light for a one-to-one um, -one mixture of both, both oxides. Thus, polarimetric measurements at small, very small uh, phase angle potentially allowed an estimate of the concentration and albedo contrast between the light and dark colored components of any regolith in the surface of a, pl a, planetary, a planetary object, or for example, the lunar soil. Uh, the uh, dependence of the polarimetric property is on the uh, on the size and absorption of the particles uh, and the packing density of the sample has also been studied uh, in laboratory to apply the result to understand several properties of asteroid regolites in the right figure here there are the results of irregular silica and carbon particles studied in seven years in a range of size between seven and something like 200 microns. Uh, three parameters are analyzed. The first one is the inversion angle, which is the angle where the phase polarization curve change from negative to positive values. Uh, the second one is the, uh, mac uh, the uh, maximum uh, the phase angle of the maximum of polarization is the phase angle at which uh, the maximum of polarization appear and the maximum of polarization. In this uh, figure, we can see that the inversion angle uh, uh, is greater for um, trans transparent materials than like this uh, uh, silica here. Uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, larger than the uh, in the case of uh, uh, absorbing ones the carbon the carbon material here uh, it uh, this is uh, in the in the case of the carbon is limited to about 30 degrees and uh, it shifts shifted to values around 50 degrees 60 degrees for transparent one the phase angle at maximum polarization of here or here uh, is larger for transparent grains than for absorbing ones and increase when the size of the absorbing grains uh, increase also. For example, we have for the smaller particles the maximum around this point and for the larger one in this point. Uh, it is possible. It, it is possible to use these studies to test different mixtures, simulating cometary analogs, and compare the polarimetric results in the laboratory with the observations. This is not possible to do with asteroids of the main belt because, in this case, the range of phase angle is not large enough to reach angle la larger than 35 degrees. In this case, the depth figure here showing phase polarization curves for cometary analogs as measured in green or red light. The black symbols are mixtures of aggregates and compact grains which are compatible with the uh, wall uh, coma observations what, uh, but the white symbols are fluffy aggregates of submicron particles uh, which are more compatible with observation of shed light features. So we can test in the laboratory uh, a mixture of uh, material uh, which could be cometary analogs and test in the, the fitting of uh, that, uh, that the materials to uh, different uh, conditions in uh, different uh, um, objects, planetary objects like 
comets or asteroids also. Uh, the maximum of the, of the polarization also change for different conditions. If the grain are deposited on a surface for transparent silica samples here, here, uh, uh, it is sim uh, significantly smaller than, the, than that for absorbing particles of carbon here. Whenever the size of the grain increase, uh, the maximum of the polarization decre decreased down to a minimum around this point, and, uh, uh, and then for larger grain size, the max uh, increase again and reach values similar to uh, those obtained for a smaller, the smallest micron size grains, which values larger than 90 degrees for carbon grains up here. If the size of large irregular particles increase, the max increase to reach constant value for the largest grain also. Uh, but it, this is for the case of depos uh, grains depos deposited on surfaces. But if we have grains levitating in clouds, uh, uh, we have for the transparent silica and absorbing carbon particles of different size. Uh, uh, in, obtained with the same samples uh, uh, with uh, command for surface uh, measurements, the submicron size grains include in large agglomerates. The difference between silica and carbon particles is very small, if, uh, and when the size of the grain increase. Uh, the max uh, first decreased down to a minimum value of around 50% for carbon and around 5% uh, for, for silica. Then uh, the max increased to about 30% uh, for silica and 90% for carbon. The last, this last value being comparable to values obtained for sub-micron size, size of the grains. In general, Measurements obtained in laboratory have mostly provided uh, results related to the dependence of the polarimetric properties on the size, then the grains and agglomerates, and absorption of the particles. Application of such results to the properties of regolith, cometary dust, and interplanetary dust particles is straightforward. Another important, important law to understand and polarization in atmosphere of this body is the Humor law. Uh, the Humor law indicates that the polarization is proportional to the inverse of, of albedo, of the albedo, for, for a phase angle larger than 30 degrees, making an interesting relation between these two, these two quantities. This is albedo, this is polarization. The figure here shows the, shows the, the uh, first result uh, uh, in the moon by Liot a long time ago, uh, where the phase polarization could before and after full moon indicates that the maxima are different. And then the albedo after full moon is considerably lower than uh, that before. This uh, relation of the used UMOB law could be a good method to find al uh, albedos uh, 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 of an offering's body if we can uh, obtain a value for a maximum of uh, the polarization. Uh, mm, uh, normally, the that relation between uh, albedo and maximum of polarization is expressed uh, by, an, uh, by this kind of equation, where, uh, where uh, it, it is an empirical relation between the logarithms uh, of both quantities, and A and B are constant to be determined. If phase polarization curves are obtained for surfaces covered by particles of different sizes, it is possible to observe that in a plot uh, albedo, 
al dedo uh, versus um, maximum of polarization, the particles of similar sizes distributed along parallel lines, indicating that, indicating that the parameter d in this, in this expression is a function of the grain size. Uh, of course, the relation, this relation failed uh, for dust free rocks here in this, in this region. In spite of that, it seems that the linear relation is still valid, but the, in, in this case, the slope changed considerably. But the interesting case for astronomy uh, are the first, these first ones. Uh, this empirical relation is not uh, useful for solar system objects because uh, they cannot reach phase angle larger than 30 or 40 degrees of phase. Uh, so it, it was uh, necessary to find empirical relations which are similar to Umo Blow, but for a smaller phase angle. There are uh, at least two options. Uh, if we assume that the, uh, the inversion angle here, the point where the phase polarization curve changed from negative to positive value uh, is uh, almost uh, 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 stable. Uh, uh, we can say that if the max uh, goes down or up, uh, indicating higher or lower albedos, uh, the absolute value of uh, uh, the minimum of polarization becomes smaller and or, or greater than this value uh, because we move these points. And if this uh, inversion angle is fixed, we also have a moving, um, um, uh, this point moving up and down. But there is another important uh, consequence of this, of this process that uh, the slope of the, uh, of the phase polarization curve in the point of uh, the inversion angle here also change because if this point is fixed and I move for high albedo objects or low albedo objects, the maximum down or up, the, uh, there is also a change of the slope here. So uh, it is uh, possible to relate the uh, minimum of polarization yeah, or the slope of the phase polarization curve with the albedo using this analogy. Uh, the, the best way to do that is, well, in, in fact, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, sub, uh, this uh, two possibilities uh, can be observed in phase polarization curve of my Bell asteroids. When we compare the phase polarization curve for dark and relative bright objects, it is possible to see a change in the shape of the curve following the proposal for empirical relations to find the video using only phase curve region below 30, 35 degrees. Here we can see that the, for the dark, the dark uh, objects, we have a deeper minima and uh, greatest, uh, greatest, uh, greatest slope, and for bright objects, uh, we have uh, the, inverse, the inverse case. So if that uh, seems to be, to be useful to determine the albedo, we can propose uh, 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 two relations uh, expressed using a linear form like that used for the maximum of polarization. Uh, these two expressions, one is for the minimum uh, and albedo and the other is, is for the slope and the albedo where C1, C2, C3 and C4 are constant to be de determined. Uh, the figure here shows the results originally obtained for the first generation for this one, for the minimum of polarization, where it is also clear that exists an important dispersion, dispersion and the fit is not very good. So, uh, uh, mm, we, but we have uh, uh, the other case, uh, uh, 
or the other relation, the relation between albedo and uh, slope of the phase polarization curve, which is a better result uh, in spite that it fails for albedo below six or eight percent here. Uh, this, uh, in fact, this is the relation most frequently used today to obtain albedos uh, of asteroids. There is uh, uh, another relation between the inversion angle and the minimum of uh, polarization here. If we plot uh, this uh, in a figure of, uh, of these parameters, this is minimum of polarization and this is inversion angle. Uh, if we plot uh, those parameters for uh, dust uh, free rocks, dusty rocks and fines, they occupy different regions. Here are dust three rocks, dust, uh, dusty rocks, and fines, uh, indicating that the inversion angle could be a text indication for the indicator for the for the surfaces we are observing. In the right here, we have the same figure, but with the, in, the, in this time with the with the solar system object, objects indicated. Uh, this uh, small circles here are all asteroids uh, and remember for later that uh, they are occupy the region around 20 degrees of uh, of for the inversion angle uh, agreeing with in agreement with dusty rocks here uh, but in fact uh, uh, the inversion angle could be a text indicator in very particular in very particular case. On the other hand, uh, polarimetry is also sensitive, sensitive to composition. The phase polarization curve for different mixtures of silicates with carbon uh, show a change in their shapes in function of the amount of carbon present in the mixture. More carbon in the mixture produces uh, lower albedos and then deeper minimum of the phase polarization curve and vice versa. So we have that the, uh, the, the, the result that the polarimetry is also sensitive to uh, composition. Well, this is a very brief, uh, 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 very brief uh, resume uh, of uh, laboratory uh, results. Uh, but uh, we have also a natural a laboratory to test and use these results, which is the solar system, and in particular, the minor bodies like asteroids and comets. Uh, so uh, we have uh, uh, here, uh, is, this is a comparison of the phase polarization curves uh, for us, of different taxonomic types. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, showing that polarimetry is sensitive to the uh, properties of the surface, mainly rugosity, porosity, albedo, particle size, and in part to the composition, making them the uh, results of uh, obtained by uh, polarimetry are different for different taxonomic type of object. Here we have these uh, are the more uh, the more primitive objects uh, with very low albedo and these are very bright objects with very high albedo. We have a, con a continuous change of the phase polarization curve from the uh, low albedo to uh, high albedo. This it's, uh, this is another another example. Ritkin uh, found that several N types asteroids, which are supposed to have a metallic composition, show it in their spectra a band of water uh, in uh, at six, three microns, indicating hydrogen. As you can see, uh, the the polarimetry can discriminate between the, both subgroups of uh, this taxonomic type with different phase polarization, clear and uh, different polarization curves. This uh, group is the, the group of M-type asteroids with uh, 
with the, the three micron bands in the R spectra, and this is the group of uh, a subgroup of n type asteroid without the the three micron band uh, in the R spectra. Uh, there are several several strange cases in in if we try to find uh, polarization curves of uh, asteroids, for example, this one, where the inversion angle for, for main asteroid, we saw that is around 20, 21 degrees, as I said a few minutes ago. But if you remember that the plot of inversion angle versus minimum of polarization, the ratio for a phase angle less than 20 degrees is the region of bare rocks. Uh, these two asteroids are two examples of uh, members of a peculiar taxonomy group called the F-type asteroids, uh, showing inversion angles near 15 degrees, which could be indication of a surface of uh, bare rocks without fine particles in their in their regolite. Of course, there is an inverse case. Uh, with the barbarians, uh, call it in this way for three to four Barbara, the first asteroid observer we observed with this behavior. Here there are objects, here are observation of objects with an inversion angle larger than 20 degrees, uh, uh, around the inversion angle of this group of objects is around 25 degrees, I think. Uh, which means that the, 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 these objects are in the region of fines, which could be interpreted as a regolite of very fine particles. But in this case, there is another possible explanation. A surface composite of material where regions of very high albedo are mixed with regions of very low albedo can also produce this phase polarization curve. The best example of this type of material in astronomy is the Allende meteorite. Where we have uh, in the Allende meteorite, we have uh, uh, calcium aluminum inclusions uh, in, on a matrix, uh, very dark matrix. Uh, so uh, uh, that objects produce this kind of uh, phase polarization curve. I prefer this last explanation because uh, these are a very small asteroid with masses that are not enough to retain the small particles which uh, uh, were produced by or of course by, by collisions and the object must need to retain that particle to, to uh, have a, a, a fine particle regolite. Well, uh, the next one, well, this is the polarimetry of comets. Uh, the polarimetry of regulation of comets allowed to separate these objects in two large groups. Uh, the first one has high p -max, uh, p max values, indicating that the particles in their comas have very low albedos. Uh, the code here to, for the atomic molecules are in are included uh, for comparison to test the contamination by gas in the measurement. So, uh, the other group is, of course, <laughs> the low Pmax uh, comets, indicating particles with higher albedo than the other group. It is possible that these two groups of comets have a different region of origin in the solar system because their material are very different. The case of, uh, of the centaurs uh, is complicated because uh, they are mean distant to the Earth, making possible to observe this object at phase length larger than five to six degrees at, at most. Uh, so in this case, we do not have a significant fraction of the phase polarization curve to study. In any case, it is possible to see different behavior for these objects in comparison with asteroids of the main belt, since it is possible to observe uh, a deep negative minima uh, at very small phase angle, which is strange for uh, 
and main, main uh, belt asteroid. Uh, one possible explanation uh, to, to this uh, uh, deep, uh, deep negative meaning a very small phase angle is the presence of a thin water ice frost layer over a very low albedo surface. In particular, that, that uh, could be the case of, uh, uh, of Polus, which has a really a deep minima at only two degrees of, uh, of phase. Uh, the case for uh, for trans-Neptunian objects is uh, uh, is worse because they are further apart than the centaurs and the range of phase angles is also lower, at least uh, two degrees. Uh, uh, here, the most striking, the most striking difference with the other objects in the solar system is that the strong dependency with size. Uh, the smaller objects here uh, show more negative values uh, at phase as a, uh, at the small phase angles than the larger ones. And for this last group here. Uh, it seems to be a difference of the shape of the phase polarization curve with composition. We have uh, the methane uh, ice rich uh, objects here with a, with a very shallow phase polarization curve and water ice rich objects uh, here with deeper uh, minimum uh, of, uh, of polarization. Uh, there are several uh, other examples of solar system objects, including the, the moon and the inner planets, Mars, and the satellites of the high -end planets, but, and also se uh, several other uh, results for uh, um, asteroids and comets. But uh, since I do not have much time, I prefer not to extend more about solar system objects and dedicate the last part of this talk to uh, protoplanetary and debris disks. Uh, through the evolution of circumstellar disks from protoplanetary to debris, starlight scattered from their constituent dust particles, and in doing so become polarized. This induces uh, uh, linear polarization. We can uh, easily, in these cases of disk, exceed values of more than 50%. Remy polarimetry and a special photon tool for studying circumstellar disks. Here we can see three disks. Uh, one is on and the other, the other two face on with the polarization vectors superimposed to the images. Since uh, reflection is responsible of the scattering process here, always the polarization vectors appear perpendicular to the scattering plane, which in, for, for example, in this case, we have the surge here in the center, the particle reflecting light here in the, in the disk, and we as observers, uh, uh, we can define with these three points uh, the scattering plane, and we have, as I, I showed at, at the beginning of the talk, uh, that the vector is uh, of polarization is perpendicular to the scattering to the scattering plane. Uh, broadly speaking, uh, well, here this is the case of uh, of uh, for a uh, S on uh, case, and it is also observed in the phase on case here. Broadly, broadly speaking, uh, application of imaging polarimetry to stellar disk fall into two main classes. The first one is use polarization to gain increased sensitivity to find circumstellar material against the background halo of relatively weak, weakly polarized starlight, using a technique called the differential polarimetry to suppress the remnant starlight. And the other is use the polarization to gain understanding of the physical properties of the scattering bodies. For instance, by measuring the degree and position angle of polarization or their dependencies on the scattering angle. 
here uh, for AIMA to provide a unique capability for measuring the shape and the structure of the scattering particles and thereby yield insight into the physical process through which the infinitesimal ascend into larger bodies. Uh, the uh, use of, uh, uh, of polarimetry has taken off spectacularly in recent years in connection with high angular resolution observations made with adaptive optics. Even the most advanced adaptive optics system inevitably leaves a residual halo of uncorrected diffracted starlight in the, uh, the point speed function surrounding the central star. Uh, often of sufficient surface brightness to bury any faint scattered light from circumstellar matter. Because passage through, through Earth turbulent atmosphere affect the ordinary and extraordinary rays identically, the spectral patterns are essentially identical for orthogonal electric fields. Uh, so the spectral patterns will thus cancel in different images made with dual beam polarimeters that sample orthogonal polarization simultaneously. This polarization differential imaging method can provide very substantial gain in constant, something around 10 to 100 times, greatly increasing the detectability of circumstellar material. Combined with the high angular resolution of uh, adaptive optics, differential polarimetry provides a sharp view into, into disk geometries, enabling direct observation of disk size, disk size uh, clearing and gaps, spiral arms, and other asymmetries. However, this gain is not without limits. The increased constraint is achieved only in linear polarization intensity, not in total, in total intensity. Uh, here there are the early results for dual beam polarimetry technique showing three protoplanetary disks. This data were obtained with the EQIRT. This one is from EQIRT, this from LIC, Adaptic Optics, and this is the DLT, the Large Telescope. Uh, these two cases here and here uh, reveal, is, uh, reveal near face on disks while the sear one shows the characteristic uh, black uh, dark lane of an optical thick disc seen close to edge on. Observer polarization fractions range from a few percent to about 30 percent, which are however lower limits due to the dilution of polarized stellar light in the point split function halo. In recent uh, years, uh, arrived several new instruments designed to achieve higher, higher performance. Among these instruments uh, are the Gemini Planet Imager, which also include polarimetric modes that would be very powerful for observation of circumstellar disks. This is the first polarimetric uh, measurements with GPI uh, obtained in December. Uh, 2013, the figure shows imaging polarimetry of the disk around HR4796A at two microns. The constant gain from uh, uh, from uh, total intensity to polarized, polarized intensity using the differential polarimetry techniques in enables the disk to be traced clearly uh, uh, all the way into its it closed apparent approach to the star here in this picture. Despite the relative isotropic scatter phase function uh, observed uh, in total intensity here, the polarized scattered light at the right is strongly polarized only for backscattering this arc which is uh, in fact behind, behind, the, behind the planet of the sky. This observation poses a new challenge for theoretical models of the stellar dust particle properties. 
and which uh, and will be very useful in in the near future to observe this kind of uh, of uh, of objects one of the uh, of the first identi identified nearest brightest and most well studied uh, herdic uh, the star is ad ad auriga uh, image polar imagery of ad auriga has provided evidence for highly porous dust particles while simultaneous revealing in great detail a complex system of spiral arms and gaps in the disk that are potentially indicative of ongoing planetary formation. High angular resolution of observation with the Hubble Space Telescope revealed the complexity of the surrounding circumstellar envelope extending well over around 1,000 uh, astronomical units. Uh, with numerous spiral band structure around a more compact circumstellar disk closer to the star. Uh, in observations taken like with NIGMOS, a clear azimuthal gap was seen in polarimetry here. Hmm? Uh, uh, at a separation of around 100 astronomical units, which appear to be a region of very low polarization, but the gap this gap in the disk was not apparently in total intensity in one or and two and two microns. Uh, the simultal variation of uh, fractional polarization here, uh, the relation is uh, between the polarized light over the total intensity of, of light may be explained by invoking the varying, polar, varying polarization with scattering angle of poro silicate dust. This is a, another example of protoplanetary and transitional disks observed by the SEED consortium using Subaru. A well of different morphological structures are seen in this H-band polarized intensity images and in particular has helped to quantify the architecture of gapped uh, pre-transitional and transitional disk. Uh, observe the high, high resolution uh, and extremely uh, high contrast uh, obtained with the differential polarimetry technique. Of, well, these are uh, mm, all images, but uh, to apply the known results obtained in laboratory and for solar system objects in the case of this, it's necessary to characterize the geometry of the process. Uh, this is a scheme of a, part, uh, of a particle here uh, orbiting around a star where the, uh, here the ellipse, ellipse indicates the orbital plane of, uh, of uh, of this particle around the star. Uh, mm, the gray rectangle here is the scape, is the scape uh, plane. Uh, I is the inclination. Uh, alpha is the phase angle. Uh, phi is the uh, scattering angle. And omega is the longitude of the ascending node. The dashed line here is the line of note where the orbital uh, and escape planes intersect each other. Uh, in, a, in a disk, we have uh, particles distributed all along the, the orbit for different values of alpha and phi, and all these particles contribute to the total polarization. Uh, but uh, if we, we have uh, uh, a, a different, a different uh, combination of orbital inclination and longitude of ascending node. We have a modulation of stops parameters for several. Well, here we have a, a several cases. Uh, uh, solid and dashed, solid and dashed lines here indicate the parts uh, of the orbit. Uh, where the planet uh, or the particle for, forward scatters or back scatters light 
respectively, because the orbit is uh, uh, in front of uh, behind this uh, sky plane. The maximum of uh, polarization is obtained always when the, uh, the scattering angle is near 90 degrees, when the, the particles are really far from the, the far from the, the star. Uh, and the, this is uh, this uh, scheme is also valid for exoplanets, not only for particles in a disk. So uh, um, we, we know that the, uh, when the quantitative measurements of the degree of polarization can be made uh, in this in these cases of this, the information can provide additional insights into the physical properties and composition of the dust particles in, uh, within a, a, a disk, a protoplanetary or a deadly disk. When light is scattered from circumstellar dust, the degree to which this polarizes depend on the scattering particle, mineralogical composition, the size and extra structure, mainly the particle shape and the degree of uh, porosity. If we can invert this process, high angular resolution polarimetry lets us infer the nature of the scattering bodies and assess uh, particular evolution within the disk. The upper figure here, the three, are uh, a simplified example of scattering induced polarization as a function of the scattering angle and dust particle properties. We have two kinds of particles uh, draw here, uh, porous particles and compact particles. Uh, uh, a, a max is the maximum particle uh, size, and the example is based in my theory for three particle size. Uh, here, the ratio of, uh, of two orthogonal components, given the linear polarization is in a scattered light, is plotted against, of course, a scattering angle. In general, uh, polarization is higher is the highest uh, for the scattering angles near 90 degrees, and the smaller particles give the greatest polarization. For compact particles, larger size uh, here lead to much lower polarization, but for porous uh, particles, this is not the case. The bottom figure is an example of using uh, measured polarization to constrain dust particle properties using the results of the of this first figure. Uh, the observer, uh, the observed polarization of uh, AB origa is indicated here with filled disk, these black dots here. Uh, by, uh, which varies between around uh, 20% and 50%, depending on the scattering angle. Uh, this level of polarization can be explained by silica dust that has a moderately high degree of porosity, with probably around 60% of vacuum by volume. Why is it important to measure the porosity of dust particles? Well, the physical properties of the particle can encode the history of that particle, and in particular, in particular, my significant significant whether the particle was ever part of a dense, compact, rocky body or not. Uh, the observer prevalence of highly porous particles in circumstellar disk tell us that the growth process for interstellar medium particles uh, to solid planet passes through a porous fluffy aggregate uh, rather than uh, through, for example, small rocky balls. This evidence from imaging polarimetry helps to link the properties of distant circumstellar disk uh, to the porous particles that are found in cometary dust within our solar system. Uh, this is the uh, last, uh, last case, which is a disk similar 
uh, is a disk of uh, a U microscopy, which is uh, in many ways similar to the disk of beta pictoris. Uh, IU microscopy is an uh, MDWAF member uh, of the beta pictoris molding group, in fact. Uh, this, uh, uh, this object was observed by imaging polarimetry with the Hubble Space Telescope and show linear polarization around uh, um, 0 0.6 microns uh, in wavelength and uh, the polarization rise from around 5% at uh, 20 astronomical units to 40% at uh, 80 astronomical units with uh, a, a break here in the slope around 40, 50 astronomical units and polarization relatively constant outside of that projected radius. The observed change in polarization with impact parameter correspond to the transition from near forward scattering to a smaller uh, impact parameters uh, to near 90 degrees scattering for wide separation. Fitting both the degree of polarization and the strong forward scattering could not be done using spherical particles, for example, but instead requires using highly porous particles likely produced by collision of the sized non-compactified planetesimals, consistent with the expectation for the early stage of planet formation. Of course, this model uh, uh, developed for our microscope has also been proved to be applicable uh, to beta pictoris. On the other hand, both uh, zodiacal light uh, compact rocky particles and and uh, compact uh, uh, porous eyes can reproduce the variation in total intensity with impact parameter uh, here. Uh, but the, in polarization, uh, it is clear uh, that the porous eyes model provides a much uh, better, a much better fit to the observations. Here, uh, this uh, H he is for a single component Helm shape Greenstein model, which uh, fit, uh, fit the polarimetry observations better than the zodiac and dust particles, but not as well as the porous eyes. Well, uh, uh, this is uh, this is. Uh, the end, my conclusion is uh, polarimetry provides useful information about the surfaces of atmospheric objects and disks. The polarimetric studies of solar system bodies improve our knowledge of several types of objects and help to understand the process involved. We can link physical and polarimetric parameters providing a better understanding of the particle characteristics. It allows an increase in mass constant of preplanetary and every disk, improving the views of these geometries, environments, etc. And it is an observable observational technique that has been improving our knowledge of planetary system objects in the last 30 years. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ricardo, for this talk. And uh, now the, uh, the talk is open for questions. Please, for doing a question or uh, ask for a question, press the button reactions in the menu in the, in the bottom of the, uh, the window and raise your hand and I will let you do the, the um, question. Maybe I can start with one question that I have. <clears throat> In the slide that you show the polarimetric curves of centaurs, uh, you show the one by Chiron and Shariklo. This one. Uh, yep, yes. 
uh, there is a similarity between the Chiron and Chariclo polarimetric curve. And we have another similarity is that both of them have uh, rings around them by ring made by water that we prove on Chariclo. And the other one, Follows have not one. I mean, have a different uh, uh, polarimetric curve, but the fourth 99 TD10 is very similar, has very similar polarimetric curve with the Chiron and Chariclo. So, can we use this curve for identifying the uh, probability to having a ring around this object, for example, for TD10? Well, the, that is a good idea because uh, um, if the ring is, uh, is enough dense, you have a process similar to, I explained for the disk, uh, the case is almost the same. Uh, a ring is a, a thin disk, in fact, but Take care because there is not uh, the, here the difference is is not uh, the the curves are not similar. For example, for Chiron you have this curve here, which is indicated with a dotted line, but for a Chariclo we have something here up. So this is indicating that you have a curve like this one, not this one here. Okay, yeah. Uh, the real difference is that Follus, which is a very, very red object, is clear and uh, uh, has a, a, a clear difference with this, this other, this other uh, centaur objects. That's all we can uh, say. But perhaps uh, is it possible to uh, to study uh, what happens if we have a disk? Around around centaurs, and what happened with the polarimetry is a is not a very no it's not a bad idea. Let me think it about. <laughs> also, we need to take into account the when these measurements were taken because the the inclination of the ring is changing along the mm -hmm. year. So, uh, for Chariclo. But I don't know, some, some years ago, we can see edge on and we have no ring. So we need to see when was observed this one. Okay, thank you. Nice okay. to know. But I think this one, TD10, is a good candidate for searching a ring. Any other question for Ricardo? I, okay, Isabel. There's first a question by Jorge Carlos that just said, I, I take the opportunity of uh, inviting again. I mean, I, I told already him before starting the, the talk, but uh, just to extend the invitation to a, to a in-person one for for the for the next future. Yeah, that's uh, I want to thank you for for the talk, and, and that's all. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Jose Carlos. Uh, hello, thank you, thank you for, for the talk. And uh, uh, I, I understand that you guys uh, use those uh, face angle curves, the polarization curves uh, um, in several ways. Uh, and for instance, they, they can provide diagnostics of, uh, of the composition, Morphology uh, uh, of particles, etc. But uh, I don't clearly see how can you disclose the different uh, 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 origins for the different shapes. I mean, uh, uh, is it is it easy to understand if uh, if uh, <clears throat> a given a, a given uh, curve is coming from from uh, carbon or or silicates or whatever, uh, and at the same time, uh, having an, a hint on on their shapes and, and sizes. Or this is a difficult task. Uh, 
to uh, I don't understand exactly what you 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 so, asked me. I, you know, for 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 the polarization for a, for the polarization to vary along the the, the face angle, you have several variables, several uh, uh, and 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 uh, provided a single mechanism as as scattering is being produced. But uh, uh, then, how how do you discern between the different variables? So how can you make sure that variations are only produced by a given uh, composition or by a given uh, shape of uh, particles or I don't know. So excuse me, I, I'm I'm a layman on the on the topic, although I, I work on polarization, but solar solar polarization and ours is mostly mostly circular. <laughs> By the way. Okay. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, here, here you have a, a typical uh, phase polarization pool of uh, yeah. Yeah. And most of this body. You have uh, uh, four, uh, five important parameters: uh, okay. the minimum of uh, polarization, the ang the minimum of polarization here, the yeah. angle, the phase angle at which this minimum is produced. The inversion angle, the slope of the phase polarization curve in the in okay. point of the inversion angle, and the maximum, maximum polarization. Angle. Yeah. Uh, the best, uh, this, uh, all four, uh, five parameters are, are uh, uh, combined in different way if you have different materials of different properties of the same phases. Uh, okay. the, the problem here is that we must uh, try to fit the observations to this, uh, to this phase polarization curve and then uh, obtain values for these five parameters. Usually, this one, the maximum of polarization, is only, only uh, observed for, uh, for example, comets or near-Earth asteroids, which uh, uh, have a very large uh, uh, phase angle. Uh, uh, due to the very elongated orbits. But normally for an asteroid, for example, we have working in this region here. Yeah. So we can fit, we for, uh, forget for this one, we can fit these four, four, uh, four uh, parameters to uh, the, the observations using a, a numerical relation with, uh, well, uh, I think, uh, I have something in some place. Uh, no, I don't have. It. I don't have it. Well, that is not important. Well, uh, so and the best way we can decide which uh, to separate the different the different uh, uh, possible combinations between these parameters are to test in the laboratory. Uh, 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 meteorite powders, okay. uh, because we have we have a lot of meteorites uh, in the in our museums, and uh, those uh, meteorites are uh, a product of collisions in the main asteroid belt. So uh, we have the materials uh, in our museums, which must uh, we must uh, observe in the main asteroid belt in the solar system. So we can compare with the same instrument, the polarization curve of one and the other, and we can decide. Of okay. course, we can find a relation between different, different, uh, different parameters of uh, different processes in the, in the objects. And, and we know that there are uh, several physical processes in the, for example, in the solar system that change the results of the of the uh, of the polarimetric observations, for example, uh, the, stellar, the solar wind produce uh, uh, an electric uh, effect on the um, fine particles of the regoliths of the uh, minor bodies in the solar system that uh, results in the in levitation of particles due to the electrostatic repulsion. That changed significantly the results of the uh, polarization. And we 
can uh, test this uh, test this uh, effect also. So there is a uh, there is a, a, a this uh, uh, topics for a, a new a new talk which <laughs> must be uh, uh, explain these uh, these differences. Okay, thank you very much. And, and, and let, let me let, let me profit from the occasion to to say hello to Stefano Vanulo. Uh, I, 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 I <laughs> no, it's quite a long time that we don't see each other. Yeah, yeah. I, I, actually, I raised my hand because I wanted to add something <laughs> okay. to the answer to your question. Is that uh, basically you have to think that uh, polarimetry is just adding information to normal spectroscopy or uh, in broadband imaging. Okay. So that's, uh, I mean, it's true, there is a lot of uh, degeneration uh, in, uh, in maybe we were not able to find uh, a unique model. Uh, it, it's certainly true, but consider that we have, uh, um, instead of having only an, an intensity spectrum, we have a, a, a spectrum that uh, is in linear polarization. We have a dependence on, on wavelength that I don't think has been, we have, has been discussed very much, but uh, uh, it, is, it, is, it is a further degree of information that we can, uh, we can have, plus the behavior that changes with the phase angle. Uh, in intensity, it doesn't, that doesn't show the same sensitivity to the phase angle. So um, I, I think that is perfectly true to question uh, the problem of the uniqueness of the solution. It's, uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's always the same. Uh, yeah. uh, any, any measurement in astrophysics is an inversion problem. It's an inversion uh, problem. And, and, and by definition, it, it, it is an ill posed problem. So yeah. you have, uh, you have um, possible, po possible combination of, of solutions. Mm -hmm. And then you have to, to, to find out which is which fits best your your data. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano. Stefano, do you want to ask a question or just for no, that was my my answer. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I was commenting on the fact that uh, yes, that there's degeneration, but uh, can you imagine without polarization how much degeneration there would be? I mean, we are always working to decrease the, the uh, degrees of freedom somehow in the, in the models. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I maybe if you want, to, I was about to comment now uh, before about the HI polarization uh, uh, that. Uh, before someone was talking about uh, you, you Rene, I think you were talking about uh, the, uh, the the rings. Uh, I actually took those images, and uh, it was a measurement. I remember we, we looked for rings combining all the images all together, so stacking all polymetric images, and so to increasing uh, the signal to noise ratio, and we couldn't see anything in intensity. Uh, we couldn't see any ring in intensity. We looked for them even before the discovery, and uh, and then we looked again after they were discovered. But we certainly couldn't see anything in uh, in the images. So probably the polarimetry is not deeply affected by the presence of a ring. Remember that the ring is uh, a structure of four four yeah. kilometer mm -hmm. wide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really very thin ring. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also depends on the inclination mm -hmm. on that time. Uh, yep. uh, Ricardo, you put this one. Can you put the other one with the TNOs? Do you have a Umea there? This, this one? Mm -hmm. Yes, here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Aumea. Yeah. Okay. Because Aumea also have a ring. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's also flat, yeah, but everything is flat in that regime. So, yeah. Yes, but it's, it's, it's almost, it's, it's very difficult to find something different uh, here because yeah. they're very flat, the, 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 the polarization curve here because you have only two degrees. Mm. Uh, it's, 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 if yeah. you compare these figures with the uh, figures of an asteroid, for example, you are, this is a, a small, very, very small fraction of the polarization curve. The resolution is too low. 
Yeah, I, I, actually, this is a very important point that uh, we are working in a, in a way where we look at the trans Neptunian object, we are looking at a very, very extremely narrow interval uh, of uh, phase angle that, uh, I mean, uh, you, you wouldn't expect to discover anything. I mean, when we started to observe trans Neptunian objects, we, I mean, I, I don't even know why they gave us time, telescope time, because uh, what's the point of observing in the, such a narrow interval range. You remember the, the curves of the asteroids, we look up to 30 degrees and then we start to see the difference. But what could we expect in two degrees? But actually, we found that, that there are these trans Neptunian objects that are very steep curve that is not observed in asteroids. And also there are other trans Neptunian objects that instead of a flat curve that you see on, on, on the left, the, the, the bigger ones. So actually, this is, was a somewhat an unexpected result. Just coming back to the question by Jose Carlos and, and your comment on the dependence on the wavelength. I, can we think on a perfect instrument like adding tunable filters uh, to change the wavelength and put in front of that or on the back of the polarimeter so we can use the polarimeter for different a wavelength interval, very, very thin filters? Well, you can do spectral polarimetry. Oh, yeah. This is the, okay. Good. Okay. Well, but in fact, we can, you can do also do uh, polarimetry in the winds of, uh, of a line in a spectroscopy, for example. It, it, that is possible also or use a very thin interferometric filters to, to, to do a spectral polarimetry. Yeah, but can, we can do that on the sun or something with very high signal. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the main problem. Okay. Any other question for Ricardo? So thank you very much, Ricardo, for uh, this talk. And I hope uh, we can see you uh, here in Granada very soon. I hope so. Thank you very much for the invitation.